Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Professor Barry here. We are in week six. Let me back up there for a second. Um, yeah, we finished up the midterm, you know, kind of reviewing core ideas we've been talking about and working with throughout the course of the term. Um, we can still carry that content forward uh, into this week for sure and future weeks. Uh, and we will do that. We're going to get into some, like, I think, really fascinating, interesting, and important content here the second half of the term. Hopefully you find it interesting and valuable um, and beneficial uh, to you and your understanding about different social issues and the sort of more generally speaking, a sociological perspective on the environment. <laughs> okay, for this week, we're going to be talking about the climate change counter revolution, the counter climate change revolution. Um, and, I, and there's, I'll talk about the, the main source for the week, which I think um, you'll find the lecture video that she provides is just really insightful. Her work and her book, um, I think really elevates a discussion or provides a lot of important information about the history of climate change science, and then the efforts of the fossil fuel industry to respond to that science. And there's been strategies and techniques that that industry has used over the years and continue to use to uh, min minimize, distort, and uh, deny this the uh, the evidence coming from science. So this is like kind of where we're at this week. We can think back on previous terms and think about sociological or previous weeks and think about sociological imagination. It's going to get us in this space to kind of look at the history of, of climate change science and development, how different meanings have been understood in different ways. It gets us into like social construction of reality a little bit. It gets us into some, some different um, spaces. But one thing we're going to talk about is thinking about social movements. And uh, if we go back, 1970 was the start of Earth Day, April of 1970. It's the first Earth Day. And that's part of the environmental movement of the 1970s. We can think about a lot of different contemporary social movements, you know, Black Lives Matter movement, um, LGBTQ related movements, um, the alt-right movement. So these different social movements and movements happen and what are the causes and influence of movements and why do they develop? There's different uh, theories and sociological theories of their development that we don't need to go through here today. Um, but just start thinking about the context around which movements happen, um, I think is an important feature. And um, movements are trying to change something going on in the existing social order. There can be uh, progressive social movements that are advocating for change, moving in a direction um, into the future of changing existing social order. Or they can be regressive, trying to return to or hold on to a previous kind of state. Um, and so, I don't know, movements are trying to accomplish some goal that they have in mind or that movement leaders um, have in mind. And for the environmental movement, and those who are part of the environmental movement, or we look at the, the goals and the objectives of the environmental movement, part of that's going to be challenging the existing institutions and structures and practices in order to provide or address the impacts of hu that humans have had and continue to have on the environment. Um, and so some of the challenges and difficulties that this particular movement, the environmental movement is going to face and climate change movement is going to face is that it's going to confront um, pride, it's going to confront power. Think about the power elite and C. Wright Mills, or think about conflict theory maybe a little bit too here that we have a significant concentration of power in the hands of particular corporations uh, and also a time period where neoliberal thought is really strong where this idea of, of government uh, taking a smaller role in the economy and, and decreasing the regulation of businesses and enterprises. And this is going to concentrate even more power in the hands of uh, the fossil fuel industry. And if there's this movement kind of developing, this climate change movement that's developing, and it's providing a lot of evidence and information about humans and their impact on climate change and its adverse impact um, on on the earth, then those and then if the, the general population starts to accept that data and information and they become part of the social movement, it's going to challenge the fossil fuel industry. 
So you think about the fossil fuel industry is not going to sit by, sit back and sort of take that, uh, you know, just, just sit back and not address, um, not try to be involved in trying to steer the social movement in a different direction. And part of what this counter movement, counter social movement has been all about is to distort and to refuse uh, to poke holes into the science that's been involved in climate change science. Um, I mean, I encourage you to watch this, this short little film. It's uh, how social movements can create real change, just to kind of address that social movements can be powerful. I mean, they can um, mobilize people, mobilize people in ways that bring meaningful change to institutions um, and structures. If we're to define a social movement, a movement, here's just a definition from one particular uh, researcher, that a movement is constituted by human beings. People are engaged in discourses, discourses and practices that challenge and change society as they define it. It is formed by people over the course of time who are involved in non-institutionalized discourses and practices. So we can kind of break this down a little bit. So discourses are the language or how we describe the world or the way we frame what's going on within the world. There's a there's science has a discourse about human impact on social change. Um, corporations have a discourse that they're offering about about things like regulation and the ways in which government is involved in their in their lives or about the impact of humans um, on the climate. So these institutions, science, government, corporations, let's say, they're all involved in sort of they have discourses that they're offering about what's going on in the social world and in the physical world. Um, and they're also engaged in practices, you know, the day-to-day -day actions of those institutions, policies that are coming out of those institutions. So if we go back to our definition of movement, is people that are engaged in discourses, they're talking about what's going on, they're framing what's going on, they're advocating for a particular view of the social world uh, or what's happening within the world. And, they're, and a movement is going to be challenging the dominant way that things are being done. So it's going to automatically, movements are going to confront uh, power and institutions by offering a different discourse, a different way of understanding, um, shining light on something, for example, looking at humans that are impact on uh, and human impact on climate change. I mean, this is going to be advocating, you know, discourses related to that as part of that's the environmental social movement or climate change movement. And that discourse is going to challenge um, fossil fuel industries, as well as maybe even um, cultural ideas about the role of government in the private sector. And um, it's being involved in non-institutionalized discourses and practices. And I think this becomes important that institutions, the dominant institutions in society are trying to maintain themselves um, and will do things to prevent changes to, to prevent changes in ways that disrupt those institutions in a significant way. Um, so a lot of ways social movements are coming at it from a non-institutionalized space, offering non-institutionalized discourses, ideologies, perspectives that are challenging um, the existing social structure. So the state institutions, different groups may challenge or feel threatened by these alternative discourses and practices, and they will engage in their own counter framing um, and facilitate counter discourses that are designed to take the wind out of the social movement's sails, uh, to discredit the social movement, um, the ideas of the social movement. And you think about any social movement that has happened maybe in your, you know, well, in recent years, we could look at different, the Dakota Pipeline, social movement, Black Lives Matter. There's the movement itself, but then there's a sort of counter movement that's going on that's shaping its own, it's shaping um, ways of thinking about race, for example, race and uh, the presence and the impact of racism in society. We have on the one side, you know, Black Lives Matter and other um, race-related social movements that are advocating for greater social equity and racial equity, addressing inequities within institutions. And then there's this counter movement going on, this sort of reaction that's more protecting a particular way of thinking and doing. Um, 
And I think it's important if we can recall back our discussion about the social construction of reality and storytelling. And if you recall back when we were talking about the commons, that we have the objective world, how things are, but oftentimes what we need to understand is that difference between the objective world, how things are, and the meaning that humans have given things um, and institutions. So there's a difference between the objective world and the constructed world. Sometimes a constructed world gets constructed in a way that it gets taken for granted, it gets so institutionalized that people see it as being truth or people see it as being the essential nature of things. And part of social movements are doing is deconstructing things, challenging these existing ways of thinking and knowing about a particular social um, issue. So the core, the materials for this week are, a, it's just one. It's a, a little bit in a video that's a little bit over an hour long. It's Naomi uh, Oreskes talking about her work on uh, examining climate change and climate change science and the fossil fuel industry and their response to it. So the film, it's an hour and four minutes. I think she's it's entertaining. I think it's really informative. Uh, she does a nice, I mean, she walks us through like the history of, of science and climate change and uh, the industry's response. She's a pr professor of history of science um, and affiliated professor of earth and planetary sciences, Harvard University. Um, and the, what she's drawing from this particular lecture is this book, Merchants of Doubt, how public relations firms, how corporations were hiring public relations firms to um, to push back against the accumulating body of scientific evidence on first tobacco and tobacco's impact on the health of consumers, and then later on climate change, that these industries have been reaching out to public relations firms, they've been involved in uh, responding to the social movements that are people are advocating for change, and the industry is, is threatened by that, so they're responding in particular ways to minimize, to uh, detract from the social movement itself. So the lecture walks us through the history of science, climate change, strategies of fossil fuel industries have worked on to minimize, deny, and obscure scientific findings. Uh, in the assignment for the week, you just kind of review the film, highlights from the film, things you found interesting, valuable, similar format or same format from previous weeks. And in the group discussion, we're going to be more focused on responding to a few questions that I pose about, about the film. Um, and um, I think you find the film really interesting, um, valuable, but there's also a lot of resources out there on the internet as well. If you're interested in her work, and interested in the work of researchers and involved in addressing this counter social movement, I encourage you to look into um, that information as well. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, have a great, uh, great film viewing and um, look forward to reading your reviews.